Hey, what's up, Stripe Nation? Blake Albertson here with BNB Lock Care. Hope you guys are doing well. Had to stop mowing early today. We got some rain coming in, but I can still make some videos here in the garage. Just doing a little bit of maintenance, cleaning everything up. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to pick the correct equipment, how to pick the correct lawnmower. This video is sponsored by Cub Cadet, and it's not a pitch fest. We're not telling you to have to go out and buy a Cub Cadet. I'm just gonna be using this Pro X 600 as an example and some things I look for when picking a machine. I made a video like this a couple years ago. Some things have changed. I'm gonna give you when times are normal and there's not equipment shortages and crazy things like that where you can't get equipment for months and months on end. When everything smooths out, levels out, um, we're gonna start off with that, the normal process of picking equipment, picking the right machine, and, and finding a dealer um, that you wanna work with. Then I'll talk a little bit more about the times we're in right now and what I would do if I was looking for equipment. First thing I would do is go to Google. What dealers are in your area? What machines do they sell? What brands do they have? Reach out to them, say, hey, I wanna demo some mowers. I want to demo stand on, zero turns. And most importantly, go talk to other lawn care companies. Go talk to your buddies in the area. Go meet other lawn care companies at the gas station. Say, see what they're running, see what dealers they use, see what their experiences have been like with those dealers. Because I can tell you, the dealer makes all the difference in the world. Because when you need service, and you go into a dealership and they're like, eh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be three weeks. It's gonna be a month before you get the machine back. That's a no go. That's it's impossible. You know, you need it. You need it today. You need it tomorrow. So, finding out a plan with your dealer. How quickly are you gonna get that machine turned around? What's the warranty like? What are the people like at that dealership? Okay, if they're there for the commercial contractor, which a lot of dealers. Are if you go to a commercial dealer, I want somebody that's that has that knows the struggles that a commercial lawn care company is going to go through when their machines break down. It's just part of the game. You're going to need parts, whether it's a throttle cable, a spindle, a belt. It just comes with the territory. You you're just going to need those parts. So that's what I do. See what the reviews are like online. Go talk to people that have purchased a machine or equipment from these dealerships. How long have they been there? All of these things play a factor like you're going to pick a, a new restaurant. It's all it's it's all kind of the same thing except it's a much much bigger investment. So really take your time to research the quality of the dealers. That that's first and foremost. Like we can talk about brands all day long and different manufacturers, but if there's not a dealer in your area it doesn't matter and I would not buy a machine that I can't get parts for locally you know some things are gonna have to order no matter what even if if your dealer stocks some parts but I'm talking about the the general wear and tear items that that just go out I don't want a product that my dealers three or four hours away it's just it's impossible I would say like I think my dealers 20 minutes away 20 minutes isn't bad 20 30 40 minutes like as long as I can get there in a in a in an okay amount of time midday and get back to work in a semi timely manner. So that's enough about the dealers. You guys know how to research and, and look at reviews and go talk to buddies. Say, hey, what's your experience like with these dealers? And, and if they're local, then hey, I need a demo. I need a demo. Can you come out? I mean, a lot of these companies, guys, they they have. You guys saw Aaron in the Cub Cadet video. Um, about a month ago. That, that's what they do. They bring equipment out to commercial companies and let them test out the product. Say, hey, mow with it for a, a couple hours. Mow with it for a day and see what you like. See if uh, you want to stand on. See if you like the zero turn. And, you know, if you don't like it, we'll, we'll just, we'll move on and, and, and maybe work together in the future. But, like, I would say a lot of these people, I, I think they just want to help like that that's what I that's who I buy from. I would only buy from people that want to help my business that can run through some of the numbers, that can run through the equipment and say that this is going to impact and help your business, not just a guy that's trying to sell me a mower. I, I don't like working with people like that. I don't want people that just if you're coming out I, I feel obligated to buy the mower. I, and I don't think a lot of people like that are like Aaron, he's just I'm showing you the features of our our Pro X 600. 
this is it, go run it, let me know what you think. And that's a perfect um, scenario for you to demo the machine. So let's go over a couple things, a couple little items here on this Pro X 600. I'll show you what I would look for and some of the things I like about this unit in particular and maybe it'll spark some ideas like, hey, when I'm buying a mower, I want that feature. All right, we're gonna start here at the back. I will tell you, and, and I'm not just saying this because it's a sponsored video, this is the most comfortable stand-on I've ever used. I haven't used every stand-on, but this platform, the springs on it are ridiculous. You can adjust them for um, a heavier operator. I'm up on two, I weigh about 210 right now. Um, and then there's a number one is for the lighter people like Tyler. Tyler weighs, uh, I don't know, maybe like 140 pounds or something crazy. I have no clue. Anyways, big tires. Uh, a lot of the mowers have switched to these bigger tires, but they make hopping up curbs a lot easier. And that's something you do when you're mowing commercial properties. You're hopping up. We have a, a commercial property, you guys have seen it on here, that has about 20 to 25 islands. So definitely a need be. Every mower has a cup holder, literally doesn't matter. I don't know one person that uses the cup holder that wants their drink to jiggle around, get all grassy and nasty and hot. So this thing's nice. I stuff a couple pieces of trash in it, but <laughs> other than that, um, the throttle, this throttle is actually a little loose, but I've actually found I love it because, you know, sometimes if you're not running an OCDC shoot, um, a discharge shoot, I throttle down so I don't hit mulch beds and things like that with the, the grass coming out. So this thing, it's so simple, it's so basic looking, but there's really nothing fancy up here to go wrong, which is really good. So of course, number one, when you're operating it, you wanna make sure it's comfortable and you wanna make sure that it cuts good. When you're out demoing it, you gotta look at the cut quality, okay? You gotta look at, the speed eh, doesn't really matter too much. You wanna make sure it's tracking straight. I mean, these are demo units. They don't have a few hundred hours on them. They might have, you know, 50 hours on them. So, you know, if they're not tracking straight then, they're, they're you know, you don't want one with a thousand hours on it. Make sure you don't have grass sticking up everywhere. Make sure it's giving you a nice, smooth, flat cut. Make sure it's tracking straight. You know, when you hold the, hold both bars down, it's going straight and it's not curving off to the right or the left, okay? You wanna come down here and say, hey, first off, this mower, I don't know if you guys heard this whenever uh, Aaron was here to show us, there isn't one grease fitting on this entire machine. The spindles are non-greasable, nothing is greasable, which means easy maintenance. The only thing that I'm gonna do, here's the oil drain hose. You wanna make sure, look how convenient that is. You can put it, just put the pan under there, loosen it up, and you might wanna blow out the air filter every once in a while. Other than that, this is, there, there's no more maintenance to it. Here's that spring adjustment for the platform. Um, I'm at two. I don't have anybody that's on three. That's for the bigger boys, what Aaron said. And one is for Tyler. <laughs> so going over that almost felt too short. And that's a good thing. There is no real bells and whistles. It's just a really well-built machine and that's pretty much it. You saw there's a PTO, a throttle, and a key on the dash. And then there's also some adjustments. So if you are ever tracking, you can simply turn them and tra keep it tracked straight. Little things like that that somebody thought of that I haven't seen on the other mowers that I've used. So the day-to-day -day functionality, you need something that cuts really good. Let me touch on striping really fast. So you guys know I love stripes, it's my whole thing. Stripe Nation, right? Some mowers stripe really well. This, this mower stripes really well. Some of the other mowers that I've used stripe really well. Just no stripe kits. A lot of the manufacturers now offer stripe kits. I'll let you in on a secret. If your mower doesn't stripe well, but it cuts really well, everything else, uh, good. That's good because you can make it stripe. If you cut it like four inches, four and a half inches, that's that's right around where we're cutting our, our fescue. Cut it a little higher. If you're just going there and scalping it and cutting it to its brown, of course it's not gonna stripe really well. 
basically what you're doing is when you go over it, you're cutting the grass and gently laying it over a little bit to make that white and green, right? A lot of it's just the patterns going over every other week. That same stripe is how we get those really deep checkered patterns that you see on like my Instagram or YouTube. But it's not like some of the mower decks do a really good job. Some of them have a little bit of rollers and things like that. This mower <clears throat> doesn't have a stripe kit or anything on it. It stripes really well. And my very first mower, what we did to make it stripe, there was a little piece of metal, a little piece of metal, okay? And then a thick rubber. It was actually from like a, like a truck. Like I don't, oh, a truck flap. You guys know what a truck flap is, like a mud flap, okay? Just cut. It was like a, I don't know, it's three inches tall or something. Bolted to the bottom of the mower deck. So it went the deck and then that piece of rubber flap, like you could see it if you were looking at the mower in the from the back. That was it, like literally $20 of material, a couple hours of work, and it made ridiculous stripes. I know there's some stripe making companies and things like that, but the, the whole stripe thing, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't base a mower decision off of how it stripes because I've used tons of different mowers and different types of mowers, and I can get most, all of them to stripe. So even my first Cub Cadet, my little residential one, dude, I would put like water bottles full of sand and water and duct tape them to the bottom of it and try to pull the grass and it worked a little bit, but I found some better ways now, um, you know, 12 years later. Finding out what size mower you need and the differences between stand-ons and zero turns. So real quick, do you have a lot of fenced in yards? We have actually started to move away from fenced in properties. I, I still have the ones that I've been doing, maybe like seven or eight properties. But other than that, we are on bigger machines, 52, 54, 61 inch machines. Uh, I still have a 36, but I just try to stay, I just try to stay away from the fenced in yards. So they're just more time consuming and it's just more equipment to carry on a trailer. I think eventually it'll be just hopefully won't have those smaller machines on the trailer. The other thing, stand on versus zero turns. If you have 10,000 square foot lawns, we are like right on the cusp of needing a zero turn. That's, that's why I got one this year, but stand ons are still perfect for these little neighborhood yards. They're so much faster, more maneuverable, just around trees, duck under the tree real quick. You know, things like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Versus a zero turn, if there's something in your way, there's so much to get off of a zero turn versus just hopping off of a stand on mower. So those two things you got to figure out, like if, if you only have money to buy one machine and you're doing these size properties that you see on my channel, like the about 10,000 square foot properties, I would say a stand on 52, 54 inch machine is perfect, but I would never, if I, most of my properties and I just had a couple small backyards, I wouldn't buy just a, 36 inch stand on because it's gonna it's gonna limit you on those bigger properties so we had such a small amount of you know 36 and under gated properties that I didn't make that a priority we used to push more for years and years and years um, because I wanted the um, speed and efficiency of the bigger stand on mowers on the bigger yards that weren't fenced in so just a little mindset there. Some of the other machines that I've used in the past, tons of grease fittings and like maintenance, that, that's just time. And I hate greasing. I hate greasing. It's, with maintenance, it's my least favorite thing. Changing oil, blades, that's so, so simple. I've done it a million and a half times. Greasing, I wasn't so good about. I wasn't so good about it. So this mower, the fact that you don't have to do that, like I said, blow out the air filter every once in a while, change the oil, I'm sure at 500 hours or whatever, you have to change the hydro oil. We have a video on that, like keep the blade sharpened, keep gassing it. And it's like, that's what I want in it, on my trailer. I don't want my employees to have to do crazy maintenance. Like our job, the only time we're making money is when we're out working, period. That's the only time your company, so if you can reduce 
an hour, two hours uh, a week or every other week, whatever you do with your maintenance schedule, if I can save that, I'm paying two guys, three guys, 20 bucks an hour, I'm saving money every single week, every single month. So don't be afraid to look up YouTube videos. Don't be afraid to look at reviews. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to go to Google. You need to find a dealer that you like, that you trust. You go and talk to them. Don't, don't just go and write, write, write a check. I know it seems urgent, especially like if you have a mower breakdown and you're looking for a new one. Take a breath, take a day, take two days, go and talk to people. If you, dude, what I would do, go in the middle of the day on a Tuesday if you're looking for a mower, drive around the neighborhoods and find somebody, find a company that's out using them and go talk to them. Say, hey, how do you like this machine? Where'd you get it from? What dealer did you go to? Who services this machine? How's your experience been with that dealer or their service department? The sales department is like, fine. If they're just nice, that, that doesn't matter. It's the service department that's really going to matter, okay? And, and they're probably ran by two different types of managers, right? Because I've loved some salespeople and I didn't like the service people, you know? So it, it just comes with the territory. So don't be afraid to do your research online and out in the field, out with... Um, real people using these machines. That's it, I hope this helps. I know when I was younger, man, here was my experience. I had a old stander, it was my very first commercial mower, and it split in half, the welds broke on it, and I didn't know what, I didn't have a ton of money, okay? I spent every dime that I had to buy a new mower. I didn't have a ton of connections in the industry. I don't, I, maybe I, I was just doing YouTube, like just starting out, maybe I had like 10 videos out or something, right? And I didn't have, I, I didn't know where to go. I, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know I needed to have a service dealer. I'm like, it's a brand new shiny equipment. What could ever go wrong with it? That's all I need is a brand new shiny equipment. Things will still go wrong. That's just how it is. How's the warranty? By the way, how's the warranty on the machine? Okay, that's a huge one. I'm so glad I said that. How's the warranty on the machine? These are a laundry list of things. Don't be afraid to go ask questions um, because you need to know when this thing breaks down, how long is it going to take to get fixed and who is paying the bill? Who's paying the bill? When I, when I was young, when I was looking for my very first you know, new purchase of a mower, I was in panic mode, dude. I had yards that needed to be cut. I had a mower that didn't work. I had nothing, okay? And I, it, it luckily worked out, but I had one buddy that had kind of mentored me and uh, I asked him, hey, what mower are you using? And that's just what I did. But I didn't have time to research and I didn't even know what to go research. So I'm making this video to hopefully help somebody that <sighs> didn't know a couple of these things. Maybe I sparked some little question or an idea that you need to ask your dealer when you're going out and searching for a mower. So let me know in the comments. If you guys have anything else to add, maybe it'll help somebody out that's that's really needing um, you know, somebody to guide them in the correct, these, these machines are expensive. It, you know, we're out working, it's, it was nice today, but it's been 100 degrees for a week and a half straight. We're out here busting our butts, it, it's very expensive. It's a, you know, th these aren't small decisions that you can just make like that. You need to really do your research because I got a family, man. This is like money in a way taken away from my family that I have to invest in my business to hopefully it gives me a return. You know, if you're paying $12,000 for a mower, 10000 whatever it is, you know, you need that mower to stay there making you money up to ten to 12000 and then to continue to run properly so you can at least make a profit, okay? That's, the, that's my, my psychology behind it. So the, these are real things. That's why this Cub Cadet, I'm like, I don't want it for a month. I don't want it for a week. I need it all season long and we're gonna, we're gonna use it. I'm not, I'm not gonna baby the thing. It'll have dents and dings and scratches and that's just, that's real life, right? Because I wanna know, hey, it, 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 is this thing really gonna hold up? And I've had it for two months, so I can only tell you the features and the experience that I've had. I can't tell you the longevity yet. That's why I'll give you guys an update 
video, you know, at the end of the season when it has a few hundred hours on it. Um, so that's it. Rain. Rain. You got to love it. And that's what's going to hopefully maybe be a little lifeline for this green grass during 100 degree temperatures. But we were like, we're like this right now. We're like going downhill where the grass is starting to not grow so much every week we show up. And then it will just start getting scorched brown. So we need a couple rainy days like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it ran a little bit lengthy, but these are very big decisions that you guys need to make. And Cub Cadet's like, hey, we'll sponsor this video. Give some good information. Just show show the features that you like about our mower. And, that's, and maybe it'll spark an idea. Hey, maybe I want this in my next machine that I go out and purchase for my business. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys are having a great day. Keep staying positive, keep hustling, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.